Hello and welcome to this Mobilytics video. I am your host Vakayu and in this one we are going to be talking about the 10 biggest mistakes that will stop you from reaching Diamond and beyond. Now we don't really need much of an introduction as the title sort of explains everything we're going to talk about. I just want to highlight that if you address all these issues within your gameplay, go watch a VOD of yourself, come to one of my coaching streams, rank your issues out of this list that we've made, and as you address them going down it, you will see drastic improvements in your gameplay. And at the same time, you should probably climb. So without hesitation, let's begin. The very first thing we need to talk about, and there should be a video going up on Mobilytics very soon that addresses this on roaming. If it is in fact out, we shall leave it in the description. But simply put, most of you do not move out of your lane enough. A lot of people play this game as laning phase, group, fight, see who wins. Where do you think the ARAM down mid memes come from? And that's not because it's a meme, it's because it literally what happens in most solo queue games. I often like to say this in my own videos, but the first roam wins. The first team to group wins. Why? Because the byproduct of everyone grouping and roaming is that in that very instance, for the first time in the game, you have a supreme numbers advantage. And usually a whole bunch of objectives are achieved, shutdowns are gained, and a huge swing in the momentum and gold lead of the game is what happens. For once, let me sympathize with the bottom lane. You know, because I do play support myself, you're 2v2, you win the lane hard, you have your level 6 bikes, you think everything is going so well, you keep pushing that objective, getting plates, and all of a sudden, with no vision control whatsoever, their mid laner, their jungler, all gank you on the bottom lane, the top laner TP's down to make it a 5 man, they shove 2 towers, fall back to dragon, and then now they just group and rotate around the map, and slowly bleed you out dry. Your mid, your jungle, they sat in their lanes, you keep watching them farming, they're not paying attention to what the enemy team is doing, they're not leaving their lanes and respecting the grouping and macro play that they're doing. Realistically, if there is a fight even relatively close to your lane, you should move and make sure you win it. And this is the most important part. We talked about it in the Dragon Secures video earlier in the season. Think about what happens if you do rotate. Think about what could happen if you have a numbers advantage. Just in case I rotate and we get the kills, what happens? Don't sit there and see your junglers fighting and go, wow, this is a nice show. You know, this is UFC 3008. I'm watching the junglers battle it out. I'm cheering them on while I carry on CSing. You think your junglers got it, so you just go about your business. In the end, he actually dies because the enemy ADC rotated. You need to move just in case you're needed. If you're not needed, maybe you lose 50 gold in CS. If you do move, maybe you get a thousand gold shutdown, you get a present from your jungler because he loves you so much, you get a few plates in the mid lane, you get a dragon perhaps. The risk reward investment in just in case movements is pretty much a no brainer. Expand your mind, expand your field of vision beyond your lane, and to quote Emperor Palpatine, do it. Now our second thing has a lot in common with the first thing in terms of mentality. Those that kind of sit in the lane and don't want to take that risk are usually too passive and don't make any plays even in their own lane. This is because a lot of us are afraid to lose. We're playing accordingly and that's not how you win and climb in solo queue. You need to play to win, but with the main goal being, how do I improve and get better in this particular game? If you do 10 out of 10 things correctly but you lose, it's way better than doing 0 out of 10 things correctly and winning. But both of those outcomes will come as a desire for you to get better and to win. If you are too afraid to make plays, if you are too afraid of maybe losing a fight, losing a trade and dying, and then you don't take those risks, you're simply waiting for the gods to make the decision. The 50-50 coin flip will come as a byproduct because you make yourself a non-factor. Make yourself a factor. Push yourself to your limits. Try and learn through limit testing. How many times you see someone in silver, you know, saying I'm hard stuck but all their KDAs are green? You're probably not taking a lot of risks. If all your KDAs are green with low kills but low deaths, think about that for a second. Sometimes having a higher kill count will result in more deaths, but that means you have higher kill participation, higher impact on the map, higher win rates, but your KDA won't be green. And as long as you're not like 10 kills, 10 deaths, you know that's a bit too aggressive, but there's a nice middle ground between those extremely high KDAs of supreme safety and the extremely low KDAs of someone who's basically inting. Don't be afraid to fail, don't be afraid to mess up a play, because once you get better at the mechanics and understanding the limits within certain situations, those plays you try to make will be more successful more often. Right now, the third thing is that everyone thinks every game needs to be different. And you know, it really doesn't. Yes, League has a lot of variables, but you forget why you are winning these games in the first place. For most game, the aim is the same, the pathing is the same, the game plan is the same. How you might do it can vary, but what you're doing about it won't. You still need dragons, you still need tower plates, you still need to rotate, you might still need Baron to shove, you still need inhibs, and ultimately, you still need to kill the Nexus. That's right, here in Mobilytics, we like to give you all the facts, even the obvious ones. But think about it, it is kind of obvious. Level 2 all in with Thresh, walk forward as you level, flay them, hook them, get first blood, use your ignite, use your flash, get the gold lead and the kill lead, understand the minion wave so that you can position to do that every game. It's exactly the same procedure. Jungle pathing for early ganks. Okay, I'm gonna do red level 2 mid lane. J4 Zin, very simple. 
Maybe you're a Rek'Sai, you can go Red Krux, Raptors, level 3 gank. You can do that every single game on the mid lane, get Pryo, control the map, and then snowball from it. And that's the thing, you need consistency in your stratagems in order to be able to carry the game. If every game you're trying something different and you're doing things randomly, you're not thinking about the broader sense of how you want to win, and that's very important. Not every game needs to be wildly different, sometimes a good strategy is simply all you need, execute it to perfection, repeat and abuse. And if you look at high elo and people who get to diamond and climb through diamond, that's what they're doing. They spam in Karthus jungle 10,000 times, the same clear, the same impact, and eventually they will climb. Although it's worth noting I find Karthus jungle heresy of the highest order, the example still stands for the point of this video. For a fourth thing, we really need to outline that people are playing too many champions or roles. People come for coaching, you look up the OP.GG, they want jungle coaching, and then you see, oh, hey, you've been playing three games of ADC, three games of top lane, a couple Blitzcrank mids. I mean, what are you doing? If you want to climb, focus. Focus is key. Repeating the same positions, repeating the same champions lets you learn as much about them as possible in terms of their win conditions, their strengths and weaknesses that can let you exploit situations that let you win games. This means you don't want to do too much by playing a whole bunch of champions and roles. The game is very dense. It has an expansive amount of experience required before you master it. That's why it's better to focus on one thing rather than split yourself five ways. We literally made a video on Mobilitics about choosing your champion pool and your role. We will link that in the description as well, as well as the end screen. So that video will really give you the lowdown of why and how it's good to have a small champion pool and focus on your roles. It's just worth mentioning. It's something that really holds people back from not only diamond, but even getting gold. Now, quantity does not equal quality is one of the most fundamental tenets of anything in life. You don't go and shoot 10,000 free throws every single day and never think about anything else. You want to get better at basketball, improve your free throws? Well, I coached it for many, many years. You don't simply go and say, right, repeat 10,000 times. Sure you do, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't only do that. Because chucking up bad free throws doesn't help you get better at them. Likewise, spamming 10,000 games of top lane Trindamir without thinking about anything else isn't going to make you, one, a better top laner, and two, a better Trindamir main. Sure, you can climb after thousands of games, but that doesn't normally work just as well. When you waste time and you play badly and you keep developing and focusing on bad habits because you think game spam is the only thing that matters, you're going to end up being worse than when you started. You end up repeating the same mistakes instead of correcting them. For the older ones in the audience, maybe some of you young people, you've heard of a show called Pure Onage. What's the first thing he used to do in the morning? Go watch VODs of Korean and High Elo StarCraft games. He doesn't just log on and play. Same thing for you in League. Watch your VODs, watch streams, watch replays of higher players, isolate your mistakes, question why you lost games, play in sets of 3 or 5, make sure you're very strict about it. If you play 5 games, and then you win 3 out of 5, and you have time for more games, take a break, and then do another set. If you play a set of 5 games, and you lose 3, take a break and be done for the day, go watch the replay, study, practice something in normals, adjust your approach. Don't just spam on your losing streak. If you were to ask me what's the key to improving and climbing in solo queue, I'm going to tell you. VOD review, spectating, watching Twitch streams and high gameplays, game players, practicing combos and practice tool, making notes about what you did wrong, how you can fix them, what are your core game plans as you go into games, isolating your champion pool. I haven't even mentioned solo queue yet. Understand that when you want to play solo queue, make sure the intent is not to win, simply to improve. If you adjust that and you are okay losing, then you're in the right mindset. If you're not okay losing some games, don't even queue up. Quantity does not equal quality, and quality is the only way you climb. Now, giving up and having bad mental attitude is obviously something we're going to talk about. A lot of people skip these kinds of sections, but I'd urge you not to. You have just as much chance to throw the game as the enemy does. Using Mobilitics tool, you can even see that your chance of tilt and throwing games is measured in metrics. There is data to suggest that when you get a lead, you throw because you tilt. There's data to suggest that when you're behind, you play with a calm mind and you can actually come back because the enemy team has the same percentage chance to throw as you do. That means even if you're down early the first 10-15 minutes, you know the strategies to play safe, to scale, and wait for them to tilt into you. Likewise, if you have a huge lead and you throw one team fight, it doesn't mean the enemy just came back. It just means that's your one mistake, reset, and carry on doing what you were doing before the error. Now, if someone is baby raging on your team, they have baby rages on theirs as well. I guarantee it. Streaming is really fun because if you get into a game with a streamer against him specifically, don't ghost. But after you finish the game and you've said, well, you know, my team was raging at me, it was horrible, go watch the stream and then see that they were also fighting with themselves. This happens in every single game. Remember that. I'm not saying, you know, don't FF when you're down 30 kills to zero in 10 minutes. 
I'm just saying understand that your mentality about improving, winning, and playing strong in your mind is the key to actually climbing, getting to diamond, and getting through diamond. And trust me, the first time you try climb through diamond, it's going to require mental fortitude and a resistance of tilt that even Frodo Baggins himself could not comprehend. So you might as well fix it now so when the challenge does come to you, you're ready. Now, as most of you know, I like to tweet out that I'm old, I'm not actually that old, but I am definitely older than the average player by a significant margin. And this is where people think fundamentals aren't enough. Fundamentals really are the biggest difference maker in a lot of players. I really don't care that you can do all 1000 ribbon combos. What I care about is that you confirm and understand basic wave management, that you can last hit well, understand the value in last hitting well and getting those itemization leads over your enemy, especially ADCs. I care about the fact that you understand that dying last is so great. It's better to give up a tower and lose CS than it is to die, give up the tower and lose CS. Dying because you're stubborn and don't want to leave a situation doesn't just give 300 gold to the enemy laner. It also limits how much impact you will have now and later in the game. It also gives them game control through objective and map focus and it also tilts your team and you don't really want to tilt your team. It's okay to lose lane. No one minds if you lose lane. Just lose lane gracefully and use these fundamentals and this map awareness to make it so. And if you're behind, help out your teammates. Avoid those ganks by using good vision control. Look for place to develop. Use the what if I rotate mindset. Go for correct itemization. If you're down 0-3, please don't decide that this is the game you want to try Warrior Triforce Warwick. It's not going to work. Build your Sunderhull, get your Titanic Hydra, get your resistances, change your game plan, adapt to the situation. If you're up 3-0, maybe you buy the Warrior and use a power spike to carry. Understand the micro mechanics of your champion with the runes and itemization within the game situation. This is absolutely fundamental, but it's violated even by pro players. If you mess this up, you can simply lose games that otherwise would have been free wins just because you didn't have the resistances and you didn't even have a complete Triforce because you were semi-inting, because you didn't lose gracefully. Acknowledge and respect the fundamentals of the game and I guarantee you, you win more than you lose. Now, not focusing enough on the early game is something that you should recognize. Oftentimes we talk about the Lee Sins, the Elise, the Rek'Sai's being dominant high elo jungle picks. Why are they not good in low elo? Simple, they do not focus on an active early game. They simply wait for the game to develop and then be upset that the lane is lost or be happy that the lane is won. That's a jungle perspective. The same can go for bottom lanes. Hey, we picked this hyperscaling bottom lane, but we died five times because we ignored our fundamentals and we didn't think about how to play a strategic early game. Your first jungle clear, your first few minutes in lane, your general laning, your level 6 spikes, understanding your item spikes along with that. These are all things that you can control within the first 10 minutes of the game. Think about how much is out of your control within the game. Your teammates, their mental attitude, who ins, who AFKs. Those things are tragic, but overall they don't actually happen that often. So if I told you all these things that you could control within the first 10 minutes, why not practice game to game, normals, flex, practice tool. Make sure your first 10 to 15 minutes is flawless, it's beautiful, it's poetry. Take that. Make sure it's consistent every single game. And then if you are playing a scaling champion, you will do so very well. If you're playing an early game champion, you will have a huge lead so that you can actually get the Rift Herald and close the game. Learn to see us better, learn to get more kills, learn to roam well. Do these things every game, the fundamentals applied in the early game, and you will start every game on the right foot, not inting, and positioning yourself best to either scale well or simply close out early. Now our ninth thing is thinking trading doesn't matter in lane. Junglers are the same. Rather than living with the fact that they chunk the enemy jungler in a 1v1 and a counter gank and letting him go into his jungle, then maybe you invade and kill him there, most junglers will simply flash under tower and try and get those kills in lane instead of setting up a kill a minute in advance. This is very important because most pro players do that in any position, jungle, lane is anything. They're thinking a minute ahead, they're thinking about how they can trade and play around the mini waves in order to get the strategic fight that they want. You'll watch them be aggressive, punish the enemy for taking a cannon and think, hey, look at him, he just damaged him and backed out, he used his mana. But the thing is, he's burning his health potion, chunking him, so the next time you do that, he can't heal up, now your support can lay down the CC, you kill them, or you force them out of lane and deny them two or three waves. Honestly, what I just said, in addition to the fact that the jungle sets up his invades and kills as well, is only making me think that this particular topic itself could be an hour-long symposium. You get a whole bunch of pro players from different positions. You'll see how a pro player or a good player understands the nuance of trading and that a one kill lead in lane that has good trading can net them a bigger gold advantage and item advantage than lane is in low either who have three kills and two deaths because they're only fighting to the death every single time. Think about your champions, think about how to trade, think about your jungle matchups, how you can invade. That wasn't meant to rhyme, but it did, and I don't have a third one, so I'll just move on to the final point, which is playing too aggressive. Blindly doing things without a reason. 
a nice little segue when we're talking about meta trading versus blind fighting. One of the most frustrating things for me watching good players who are stuck in silver, stuck in gold, and you see the mechanics and their mindset early game, they do everything on this list, but they don't have reasons for why they do certain things. Mid game comes around, let's pick a fight because we can pick a fight. Not thinking about summoner spells, not thinking about ultimate cooldowns. The nuance of aggression is actually in reaction to what the enemy does. If they use a crucial spell on a minion, well, that spell is now down and now you will win the tree because you literally have more abilities available than them. If you're too passive, you're not even thinking about it because even though they use the ability on the minions, you're too afraid to fight them and you don't understand how far you can go. That's where the repetition of the same role in champions comes into play very heavily. And then of course you have the classic vein examples of, hey, we're fighting now. The enemy has all those CDRs up, all those summoners up, they're in a minion wave. The vein says, no, I am vain. I will vein spot myself and I'm going to destroy you. And now she's one in five. Have measured aggression. Jungle is the same thing. You don't need to fight the Leeson over Crab. Mid lane and bottom lane have no prior. If you lose, you die. You give up so much. Just back away. It's okay to save the fight for another day. And again, this isn't scripted. I apologize for that rhyming. What can you do? And there you have it. 10 things that you will see high elo players do all the time. 10 things that you need to fix if you want to reach high elo. And 10 things you need to do if you simply want to reach your goals in season 2020. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed and learned something. Consider subscribing to this Mobilitics channel for a lot of variety coming up very soon. I've been your host, Rakayu, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial. And stay home and wash your hands.